Hello, welcome back, and this is our flax bed, flax planter mini game uh, that we're working on. So we're going to now uh, start to put together the logics to create the actual game. Now I've drawn out um, a sort of flowchart as to what the game actually does. So the idea is that you start here where you plant your flax seed. And then after a certain time, uh, the flax plants grow. And then after another certain time, some weeds grow. Now at this point, you have a choice. You can either let the weeds remain uh, for however much time, or you can weed the bed. So let's follow this branch. When you weed the bed, um, the weeds basically disappear and your flax plants remain. And then after a certain time, more weeds grow. So again, you have a choice whether to uh, pick the weeds or to just let them grow. So in this case, if we pick the weeds, again, the weeds go away and we're left with flax plants. And then after a period of time, uh, the flax bed is ready to harvest. And then when you harvest it, you get your flax. So that would be uh, this thing right over here. Now, uh, if you decided not to weed, in any of these uh, points, what you get is basically a, a weedy bed, which will not give you any flax at all. After a certain amount of time, you get a seed that you can that you can harvest. So this gives you a flax seed that you can then go off and you know plant again. And in this way, uh, you can basically uh, create more and more flax as you need it. So when you harvest a seed. Um, it goes back to just being, you know, weedy. But if you don't harvest, harvest the seed, nothing really happens. It's just that you don't get the seed. So after a period of time, another seed appears, and you can harvest that. Another seed appears, and so on, four times uh, until in the final uh, section where you just leave the weeds as is and it times out then basically the flax bed disappears and you're just left with a seed. Um, if, on the other hand, um, you left that final seed alone for a certain amount of time, basically, again, the same thing happens. The flax bed disappears and you're left with a single seed. So uh, the idea sort of is that if you had planted a seed and then just walked away, uh, you would go through this path and eventually the flax bed would basically die off and you would be left with your original seed. Um, you, so you can harvest seeds along the way and you can get as many as five seeds. Now, in the actual Tale in the Desert game, um, this can get more complicated depending on the type of seed that you plant. So you originally start with an old Egypt uh, flax plant, which I think gives you one flax if you harvest it, or it can give you as many as five seeds. Um, and you have to weed the bed. Um, and I'm not sure how this works, but uh, there are other types of seeds that you can get using um, basically um, um, you know, farming techniques uh, to sort of cross species. Um, and you can get better seeds that give you maybe two flax or two flax and one seed um, and so on. Um, some of these other uh, seeds also require you to water the bed at certain points. Um, sometimes they give you more seeds. So um, this is sort of like just the basic mini game that you can build off of, and that's all that we're going to do right now. So, um, so let's start uh, by thinking about this section of the flowchart here. Um, when you plant the flax bed, basically nothing is in the bed except for the stakes and the dirt. Um, so after a period of time, you get growth. So these uh, weeds, uh, weeds, these uh, flax plants right over here should sort of gradually appear. So in other words, the alpha for the material is going to go from zero to one for a period of time. 
Um, and it's the same thing with the weeds. Uh, when weeds appear, they sort of fade into existence. And when the seeds appear, we want the seed to fade into existence. Um, so I thought we would work on that part of it first. So let's get started. Let's put that all the way over there. And what we're going to do is we're going to start by looking at our flax, not flax bed, um, flax planter. Uh, where is it? Okay, so I've lost it, but that's easy. I can just uh, I can just grab a dev tip. It's probably right in front of me, and I'm I'm just not seeing it for whatever reason. Um, so I can just do this, and I can open up an inspector, and I can see what happened to it. Uh, surround V1. There we go. Um, and we can see that its parent is a root, so of course it should show up here. There it is, surround V1. I just didn't see it. So, okay. So um, here is uh, our flax bed. So we can see that the flax is uh, visible and the weeds are visible. Now, um, we can make the flax immediately invisible by deactiv whoops. by deactivating just the flax group. So you can see that all the flax is gone. Um, same thing with the seeds. That's the seed right over there. We can deactivate that and it disappears, and the same thing with the weeds. Okay, so now we're left with an empty bed. So uh, this is not exactly what we want to do. Um, we do want these to be active all the time, but invisible. So let's start with the flax and look at it. So this is active, inactive, active. Now, uh, in order to make the flax plants uh, gradually appear, we need to modify their materials. So there are two materials. There is the tune material on the stalk and uh, the tune material on the flower. So I think that what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that material and put it into a separate object under flax. Uh, and the reason that I'm going to do that is that then I can take that object, apply it to all the flax plants um, and the corresponding one for the flower, um, and then I can just um, refer to it. I'll show you what I mean. Um, so I'm going to create a material, create a new material. Um, it's going to be the tune material. And basically, I'm going to copy, first of all, let's see what we have. So for the stock, I'm going to pull out the main texture and the normal map. Uh, did we have anything else? Yeah, we needed to change this to alpha. OK. Uh, Z right was off, which I honestly don't think we care about. Um, and that's it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a child of flax. And I'm just going to call this um, materials. And I'm going, OK, that's, well, that was dumb. OK, I, I didn't want to do that. What I wanted to do was attach component assets materials tune material. There we go. And now the main texture, the normal map, and change this to alpha. OK, I didn't actually need that. OK, so that is the material for um, actually, instead of calling this materials, let's call this stock material. And I will create another object, and I'm going to call this flower material. I think I could probably just have another component. Um, 
in the same object. The problem is that then, you know, I would sort of want to rename this uh, material. Um, and really putting it in its own object lets me do that. So here's the flower material. Going to attach, actually, you know what? Instead of doing that, I'm gonna cancel out of this. Let me delete that, and then the stock material I will just duplicate. So now I have the same thing, except I can replace everything. So this is the flower flower material. And I remember that there was no texture, there was no normal map, it was just the color. So let's take a look at what the color was. So I can set that to the side, go back to the flower material, copy the color in, color, color. Okay. So now what I can do is I can take this material, see now I have it, and I can go into the cac the, into the, uh, the flower itself and drop it in, and now you can see it says tune material on flower material. So I can do that for all the flowers. And again, the only reason that I'm doing this is for convenience, so that I have a particular material to modify instead of just modifying arbitrarily one of these. Um, and the other thing, though, is I think that um, if this material, I'm not sure, but I think if this material is not stored in an object itself, it basically goes to the world assets uh, object. And that means that if I modify it, I'm modifying the world's copy of this, which means that everything that uses that uh, can get modified, which is not what we want. Because if you, you know, plant 10 of these, obviously they're all going to be doing different things. So that's why I am doing this, or at least one of the reasons. Okay. Throw that ball away, go to the stock material. Now this is my stock, so I'm just gonna copy it in. Okay, so I think those are all the stocks. And I can test that by just going into, say, the stock material and then modifying the alpha um, here. So if I go into here and I change the alpha, they should all disappear, right? Leaving just the flowers, of course. Okay, uh, let me set that back to, to one. All right, so. Uh, we need to write some logics that will fade this in from 0 to 1. And in fact, what we want to do is make sure that in the beginning, um, these are set to um, 0. So the way we're going to do that is um, under, under flax. What I'm going to do is I'm going to create an object and I'm going to call it logics. So the idea here is that I want to create a utility, kind of like a utility function, even though there aren't any functions in logics. Um, but it's it's more like a, it's not even a call. It's a, it's called a dynamic impulse, and you basically give it a name and then you can direct an impulse of that name to a particular object. So in essence, it's kind of like a call, except not really. So I'll, I'll show you what I mean. So under logics, uh, I'm going to create another child, and I'm going to call this one um, alpha. So now let me release my dev tooltip, 
go to my inventory and pull out the Logix tooltip. And here's what we're going to do. I'm going to open a node browser. So now this is where I can add nodes. So um, under flow, we're going to use a dynamic impulse receiver with value, and we're going to have it take two floats. Float two. Okay, so let's stick it here. And the name of this is alpha. Uh, can I just pull it from here? Yes. Okay, so this is the name of the sort of function call, just alpha. Um, now, a lot of people use blueprints or red prints, which sort of um, slap these nodes onto a nice plane or a nice grid. Um, I personally use red prints, but I thought I wouldn't use that, you know, just to show that you can do this without red prints. Uh, certainly, red prints makes uh, organizing things a little bit easier because it looks nicer, um, but this is good enough. So the idea is that you would call alpha with two floats. And here's what I'm going to do with the floats. Let's go to, um, sometimes it's hard to remember where these things are. Is it math? Yeah, it's math. Constant lerp. So what constant lerp allows you to do is it takes a target and a speed, and it outputs some number. So let's demonstrate this. I'll just display this. Here is the target, and here is the speed. So I'm going to show you what a speed of 0.1 looks like. Now I'm going to change the target and watch the output value. So I'm going to change the target to 5. So you see how it increases? So it's increasing uh, basically at uh, 0.1 per second. At least that's what it looks like to me, right? 1.2, 1.3, 1.4, 1.0. That's about a second. So it's going up at 0.1 numbers per second, and it's going to go all the way up to 5. Now, I can change it right in the middle back down to 0, and it'll start, you know, counting down. So essentially, the constant lerp sort of keeps in mind uh, its uh, current target, um, or it's, it's actually its current value. Um, and then when its target changes, it immediately starts moving towards that target um, at, the, at the particular speed. So this is what we're going to use to modify the alpha, right? Because we can just change the alpha from 0 to 1, and it'll start fading in, and we can adjust the speed accordingly. The two floats that we're going to give it are the target and uh, the speed. Uh, the reason that we want to give it a speed is that if we do something like 9e9, so that's basically 9 billion, if we then change the target to 0, it pretty much immediately goes to 0 with pretty much no delay because it's going at, you know, 9 billion numbers uh, per second, uh, you know, which, which equates to basically nanoseconds. In other words, no time at all. So what we can do is we can take this constant lerp, and what we're going to have to do is store the target and the speed. So the way to do that is we go to variables, and we go to storage, and we pull out a float2, and then we go to actions, and we go to write. So here is write. So write takes the impulse, and it takes the value, and a pointer to the location that we want to write to. So the reason that we have to do this um, is that the value is actually lost once the impulse is finished. So the impulse is finished. Uh, this impulse right over here is finished um, after write completes, which means that after write completes, it will have written that value into float2. So, we sa so we've saved it. And that way we can do you know, something else with the next impulse, and this value, again, uh, remains. Now, to split the float2 up, we have to go to, not math, uh, operators. 
we have to go to operators and then there's unpack xy. Unpack xy simply unpacks the float 2 into two floats, top and bottom. Okay? So uh, the final step now is to actually convert this into a color because what we want to do is drive the um, stock material and the flower material at, at the same time. Uh, and to do that, we're going to drive the color here. So if I grab color and then I secondary click, you're going to see this enormous interface card. And uh, that interface card is basically uh, the, uh, all of the fields in the tune material. The only field that we're really interested in is color. So that's the thing that we're going to drive. So, and in fact, we're going to also drive um, the flower material, but let's first only work with the stock material. So what we need to do is we need to drive it with a color that is 111 and then whatever alpha is coming out of the constant lerp. So to do that, um, it's not going to be pack XYZW because even though those are four values, X, XYZW is for quaternions, in other words, rotations. Um, so you don't do that. Instead, there's um, pack RGBA. That is a color, and you can see that the colors of color actually match. So for the, uh, for the stocks, we want 111. Uh, right, because the, the texture actually gives you the color. Um, so 111 and an alpha of whatever this is. So I do this, and then I can pull this out and give it a 1. Give it a 1. And then it's just 111. And then I can drive the color. Oops. And then I can drive the color. And there you go. Now, the stocks have disappeared because, of course, um, the, uh, the current value of this register is 0, 0. What I could do is I can just create another write node and write to that float. And then I can manually pulse the impulse. And I can write, say, an alpha of 1 and a speed of, well, let's just see what uh, point 0.1 does. And then if I pulse it, See, they appeared. Um, it's a bit slow. Now, if we just want them to completely disappear, we can replace the speed with 9e9 and the alpha value with 0 and go. And there it is. So with this, we can actually start to fine tune what we want to see. So instead of 0.1, Let's suppose we want it to fade in over a period of three seconds, so it would be 0.33, say. Okay, uh, maybe we want it a little slower and make it 0.25. So um, let's pulse zero and then it'll fade out over a period of four seconds. That, that is probably, I think 0.3 is just fine. So we do this. Oops, pulse. And I think that's fine. Okay, so um, the other thing that we need to do is handle the flowers also. So if we look at the flower material, we can see that the color is this particular color and the alpha is one. So again, we can use our pack RGBA. We're going to use the same alpha because we want them to fade in and out the same way, but use these uh, values. So the R would be this. G is 0.29. And B is 0.54. And now I'm going to pull out the color, which gives me, again, this huge interface card. We're only interested in the color. OK. So now everything should be wired in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make them all disappear. So 0 and um, 999. OK, they all disappeared. And now 
Let's suppose we want them to appear now. So we hit pulse. And there we go. They appear. Okay. So now to store all of this code into alpha, what we do is we grab alpha and then we secondary, no, we don't secondary click. We grab alpha and then we uh, primary click and we choose set packing root. So now we can see on the tool it says alpha is the pack root which means that when we pack this, in other words, I point at this and I hit secondary, okay, it packs. Now, it only packs up to, um, it, it packs everything that's connected except for these pointers. And I think there's a mode that you can set, uh, which will even pack, which will even go through pointers, but you just have to pack those things separately. Okay, that's it. That's alpha. Now, in order to actually um, send sort of, it's kind of like a message to send that message. Um, what we do is we go to dynamic impulse trigger with value, and it's going to be a float too. So let me spawn that with manual pulse. So what we're doing is we're going to we are going to um, send the alpha message to the flax slot. In fact, we can even send it to the logic slot. So let's do that so that it doesn't have to like search down so far. So that's where the message gets directed to. And then we can give it a number. So let's suppose we give it 0 and 9e9. Then if I pulse this, you can see that everything disappears because what happened is we sent the alpha message to the logic slot. Um, there was nothing in the logic slot, so it went to all of its children. It looked in alpha and it saw, oh, there is actually something that can receive this message with this particular type. And it went ahead and processed that message. Now, if we want the flowers to appear again, uh, let's just do 0.5 because I'm impatient, and we pulse it. There, they appeared. So that's how we're going to sort of like trigger this in the game. Now we can do the same thing for the weeds. Um, it's just a matter of doing exactly the same thing. Creating the material, dragging the material, uh, uh, bringing, copying the material out of the weed into the weed material and then setting up the logics with pretty much exactly the same code, except we're only driving one material, and we're driving the weed material instead of the stalk and the flower material. Um, and the same thing with the seeds. So it's basically more of the same. So um, let me go ahead and just get rid of this. So I'm going to try to grab all of these. destroy it. Okay. Um, so now the next thing is when we spawn one of these planters, we want to start the game going immediately. So it's like you uh, put a seed on the ground and it immediately turns into a planter with nothing in it. How do we do that? So what you do is, I think it's under events. So I think you can probably do something like on duplicate, I think. Um, you can also do on start, but it's, so if I look at on start, uh, it takes an only host and it gives you an impulse. And the idea is that whatever object contains this is going to create an impulse when the object appears in the world. The problem is it also creates an impulse when another user joins you in the world. Uh, that's my understanding of this. So in other words, that's not good because then if a new user joins the world, the mini game uh, restarts for you, which isn't uh, any good. Um, so I think we want on duplicate. 
Um, there's also unloaded, and again, I'm not sure uh, whether it should be unloaded or on duplicate. I've used on duplicate before, so I'm going to stick with that. Um, so the idea behind on duplicate is that if the object that it's a part of was duplicated, um, then on duplicate fires. And what that should do is it should start the game off. So on duplicate, and what we're going to do is we're going to put that in the surround. In fact, let me rename this now to V2. I'm going to create a child and I'm going to call it logics. And this is going to hold all the game logic or the main game logic. Obviously, there's some like utility functions in here. And under logics, I'm going to call it, you know, just, I don't know, game. Game is fine. Okay, so this will be a part of game. So what we want to happen on duplicate, and uh, we're going to modify this in a moment, but so you can imagine that on duplicate, we want, to we want to send a message to the weeds and the seeds and the flax plants that they should all have their alphas set to zero. Um, and you might think, well, you know, why didn't we just set the values of these uh, flax of these things to zero by default? Um, and the answer is, well, I mean, the state is what it is, and it's a good idea to just reset everything. So why don't we just do that? Um, so on duplicate, what we want to do is we want to trigger a message with a float to. So there it is. And the message is, of course, alpha. And we want to send it to the flax logics. Now, the thing about this is that you can drag out a display and you can see what exactly it is. So sometimes you just might want to leave it there so that you know what you've done. So I'll just leave it there for fun. And we want to set it to zero and immediate. So pretty much 9e9. Why don't I just do like 1e10 for fun? Okay. So that's that. And of course, you know, when we do it with the weeds and the seeds, we also want to chain this. So what happens is, after the message is processed, this impulse goes off. So it's not like um, a message is sent sort of in a different thread. No, it's, it's actually just one continuous loop, uh, one continuous thread. So, um, so we start with on duplicate. Then we send the message that goes into the alpha message, which then goes ahead and sets up the lerp. The lerp goes ahead and does its thing. But in the meantime, the impulse is done over there. So we get another impulse over here. Um, so we can demonstrate this by packing this into game. So we need to set the packing root and then pack this up. And then what we can do is um, let's let's do it this way. Um, I'm going to save this in my inventory um, under planter. Okay, so this is surround v2. I'm going to save it. Okay, so now it's saved. Now you can see in the image. Uh, that the flax plants are there. That's because the flax plants are here. Now, let me go over here and spawn this out. Ah, okay. Oops. Um, I have to make those things not grabbable. So the problem is that on duplicate didn't actually do anything. However, however, um, if I go ahead and um, yeah, okay, so this is going to be really hard to demonstrate. So let me go and do some research and see if uh, on duplicate is really what I want. I suspect it is what I want because um, nobody is actually going to spawn this out of their inventory. It's going to be part of the game world and it literally will be duplicated. So I probably shouldn't even bother. Um, so let me go back to here. Um, let me dequip this. Let me equip this. 
Let me open up the root. So this second surround here is that, that one over there, which I don't actually want. So I'll just get rid of it. So what I want to try to demonstrate is that when I duplicate this, so that when I duplicate this, the flowers actually disappear. And the problem is that if I just duplicate it, it's going to duplicate it in the same place with these flowers intact. Um, so what I need to do is get rid of all the grabbables. So let me just do that. Okay, so uh, was the ground grabbable too? No, the ground was not grabbable. Um, I don't think any of these are grabbable either. Okay, so all of these are now non-grabbable. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate this, and then I'm going to drag the duplicate away so that you can see that the flax plants aren't actually visible. So I duplicate. Okay, so... Presumably it's here, but the problem is that it's on top of the existing planter. So if I move um, this duplicate, uh, which is not grabbable, of course, but I can move it aside. Okay, so there it is. We can see that uh, the new one, that's the duplicate right over here. Which one is it? Is it? It's this one, right? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's definitely this one. Um, so you can see that the duplicate, um, the, the flax plants are gone. And that's because it was duplicated, which caused on duplicate to fire, which caused alpha to fire with 0 and 10 E9. So it made the flax plants disappear. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go off and do the same thing for the weeds and the seeds, and then we will come back. Okay, so um, I think that the next thing that I'm going to do um, is make it so that we can pick these weeds uh, using either um, the ray cast thing and grip, or, you know, to pick it up by hand with the grip. Um, so that would apply for the weeds and for the seeds. Um, so again, you should be able to pick any one of these weeds, and then that will weed the bed. Uh, and you should be able to pick any one of the seeds that will appear on the flowers. I guess I need to, to copy these seeds over. Um, and that will harvest uh, one of the seeds. So I think that's what we're going to do uh, with Logics next. Okay, so uh, what I did... Um, during the break um, is I added a weed material and logics to the weeds, a seed material and logics to the seeds um, so that we can change the alphas on those. Um, I also went through and made sure that nothing was grabbable. Okay, so what we want to do is to detect a grab on a weed. So here's a weed, there's a weed, there's a weed, and we want to detect a grab on that. So we're going to go, so because this is going to be for the weeds, we will start, um, we will start that code in the logics for the weeds. So we're going to do something like um, grabbed. So let's see what we, let's see what we can do. So what I can think is that we send a message uh, saying, you know, I guess detect grabbed. Maybe I should change this to detect grabbed. Okay, and what that will do is it will start a timer, right? Because according to the flowchart, which I don't have with me, um, according to the flowchart, you have a certain amount of time to grab the weeds. And if you don't, then the bed just becomes overgrown with weeds and you can't weed it anymore. Um, but if you pick the weed within the timeout, then that sort of cancels the timeout and picks the weed. And by picking the weed, uh, that will basically set the alpha back to zero so that you don't see the weeds anymore. And then the game will continue on to the next state. So there are a few issues here. Um, 
So one of the issues is um, with timers. Uh, so if we go to, where is it, flow? So there's timer. And what timer actually does is you give it an interval and it outputs a pulse every one of those intervals. So for example, um, if I were to set this to one, you can see that we're getting an impulse every one. So that's not exactly what we want. So let's just destroy that. Um, there's a delay. So this is something closer to what we want. So if I give this two seconds, get this out of the way, um, and give us a manual pulse. So the top one will be an impulse after the delay. Uh, the bottom one is an immediate impulse so that you can chain nodes together. So it works like this, pulse there, and two seconds later, pulse over there. Um, so this is great. Unfortunately, you cannot cancel these delays. So in fact, if I pulse this twice, you'll see that this thing goes off twice. So in effect, this is a, a queued delay. So there's sort of like an internal queue. There's no way to cancel a delay. Uh, well, okay, there is one way to cancel a delay, and that is to put the delay in an object and then delete the object. Um, and that should actually delete uh, any delays that are queued up. Um, so that's one way of doing it. Um, the other way of doing it is if you know that uh, you're not going to be triggering the delay uh, within the delay period, you can just put like an if statement after here and a Boolean latch. So this is a Boolean latch. It's basically, it basically stores a Boolean and you have a set and you have a reset. You also have a toggle, but if you set it, it goes true. If you reset it, it goes false. And then what you can do is you can say, um, so if you pick the weed, you set the Boolean latch, and then when the delay goes off, so, you know, you set the Boolean latch and you go off and send a message saying, okay, uh, the weed was picked. But in the meantime, the delay is still going. So what you would do is you would use an if statement here, and if the latch is not set, that means that you haven't picked the weed within the, the time period. So let's change this to say five seconds. Uh, let's reset the latch. Uh, in fact, what we can do is we can tie the reset to the delay. So that way when you pulse this impulse, it resets the latch and then starts the delay. So that sort of starts everything off. Uh, this pulse, this impulse over here represents picking the weed. Um, and when you pick the weed, you'll get an impulse over there. So if you don't pick the weed within five seconds, then this latch will remain false. And when this impulse goes off, uh, the top one is true and the bottom one is false. Uh, and it's the bottom one that we're going to want to look at. So um, I can reset the latch, one, two, three, four, five, and then this impulse goes off saying you didn't pick the weed. However, if I do it again, and then I pick the weed, you can see that this latch goes to true, this impulse went off, but now this impulse is not going to happen because this latch is true. Now this will work as long as you don't reset it within that delay period. So for example, if I do this, and then this, and then this again, we'll eventually see that pulse go through. And actually, you see two pulses go through because there was the original delay from when we reset the thing, and then the second delay from when we reset it the second time. So just keep that in mind. Again, if you want to get around this fact, pack all this into an object that you can delete, and that will, um, 
and that will um, cancel any delays. Um, you can see there's also updates delays, and that is basically instead of seconds, this is a number of updates. Um, I think that is tied to frames, I think. Um, there's also delay with value, uh, which is the same thing as delay, except you can give it a value to output. Um, so, so you can have sort of like a queue of, uh, of values that go along with the delay. Um, okay, well, I mean, this is, this is part of the logics that we want. So the next thing that we want to do is detect that something has been grabbed. So um, there's nothing under events. Uh, but I think there's like, let's see, is it interaction? Grabbable. So there's is grabbable grabbed. So that's not it because I really want it to output an impulse and that would be on grabbable grabbed. So here is an impulse that will uh, pulse when a grabbable is grabbed. Now a grabbable is... Um, so if we look at the help text, we can see grabbable, I grabbable. So the I means that it's an interface. So it's basically um, anything that implements the interface grabbable. Now, I don't know what uh, does except for grabbable. There's a component called grabbable. So let's go to the weeds. Okay, so here is the weed. Let's attach a grabbable component to it. Um, which weed is that? It's that far one. Um, I want to work with this near one, so let's see which one that is. It's this one. Let me cancel out of that. Okay. So I'm going to work with this weed. I'm going to attach um, it's, for some reason, it's still, it's in transform interaction. Grabbable. Okay, so that makes this weed grabbable. Now, I don't really want to grab it. Um, well, okay, so if I grab it and move it around, I can always undo grab object, objects and it will go back to where it was. So, so there it is. Um, by the way, one of the keys to grabbables actually working is that you have to have a collider somewhere in there. Uh, so there it is. There is the mesh collider. Um, it is a mesh collider, which basically means that um, if you go through the leaves, you can't grab it. You have to grab it on the leaf or maybe the stem. Um, mesh colliders are a little more complex to compute uh, and detect. Um, so, you know, if you've got, you know, thousands of these, maybe go with a box collider instead um, or something. Um, so under mesh collider, there's a type. So there's there are things like no collision, uh, static, trigger, um, and that, that's sort of like beyond the scope of, of what we want to deal with. Character collider means that if you walk into it, um, you, you, well, uh, you can't walk into it. You would collide with it. And ignore ray casts is not great because now you can, I don't know if you can actually see this, but my ray is actually going straight through the leaf. So in other words, I, I can't actually um, hit it with my ray, I would actually have to go right up to it and grab it physically with my hand. So if you want to do that, that's great, but you know, I'm not going to do that. Okay, so back to the weed, we have this grabbable. Now, if I grab this grabbable and then hit secondary, I get this um, interface card. And then if I take grabbable and I wire it to on grabbable, it's accepted without any any casting. Um, so that means that this actually does implement I grabbable. Um, so whenever it's grabbed, we're going to get an impulse. And I don't know if this is actually going to work, but let's see. Yep, there we go. Uh, the, the impulse went off. The impulse went off again. Let me undo the grab. And I think there was a second grab in there. Okay, now it's in the correct place. So um, this is pretty good. So we've got the one weed. Um, we can do that for the other weeds as well. So let's go into this weed, attach a 
um, transform interaction grabbable. Um, let's go ahead and just pull out the interface card for that. And then this top lead, let's go and add a transform interaction grabbable and pull out the interface card for that. Now, um, we're going to have a second on grabbable and a third on grabbable. So here are the three grabbables. Um, let's go ahead and drop these. Now, I think, I think I can get rid of these interface cards now because these are simply pointers or references to these interface cards. So if I delete it, these references remain. Now, what happens if I try to, quote, print this out? Well, it just says grabbable. So um, I, I think you, you actually need something like um, um, the slot for this. In fact, let me just take a look and see if that's possible. Um, I think it's get slot. So whatever this is, so it gives you which slot it is. Now, of course, it doesn't tell you which weed it is. Um, to do that, I think you have to use like ref IDs or something. But anyway, that's neither here nor there. The point is that now we have something uh, that will pulse um, based on whether a weed is, is grabbed. Now, uh, let's go into flow. And um, what we can do is I'm going to put uh, an intermediate uh, impulse in here. And then I'm going to wire all the impulses in. So this is basically if any of these impulses go off, this impulse will go off. So to demonstrate that, um, let's pick, say, this weed. OK, so that went off. Let's pick this other weed here. OK, that one went off. Let me undo the grabs. OK. Great. Okay, um, so this is our grabbing uh, impulse. So we know that we want to put that through the Boolean latches set. So that tells us that something has been grabbed. So I don't need this anymore. Okay. Um, what goes into the reset would be a, a, a dynamic impulse receiver. Um, I'm not sure whether I want it to receive a value, but let's just use the dynamic receiver without a value. So there are no parameters to this. And we will call it detect grab. Okay, so when you, uh, when you send a message, detect grab to weeds, it will start the five second timer and let you grab the weed. Now, uh, what happens, what would be bad is if, you, uh, is if you grab the weed and then grab it again. So what would happen is uh, if you send detect grab, the, the five second delay starts, you grab the weed, great. So this impulse goes off, and effectively the delay is canceled. Now, if you grab it again, what's going to happen is this impulse goes off again. So I don't think you want that. What you want is that when you send detect grab, you can only grab this once. And if you don't, like, reset it using detect grab, um, you can't send another impulse again. So in other words... Um, when this is reset, we only want to accept this, um, we only want to accept this impulse if this latch is false. So that means that we are going to have to put an if in here. Um, we're going to have to wire this up to here. Uh, let me see if I can make this a little nicer. Okay, that's a little nicer. Um, and then if and only if 
the latch is false, in other words, it's reset, we let the impulse through. So once the impulse goes through, that sets the latch to true, and then this if node will just sort of send these impulses you know, into, into the ether um, so that you don't get this impulse a second time. Okay, um, so that's great. So now the, uh, the last thing is, the last thing is, I guess I don't need this anymore. So now we have these two impulses. This impulse here says the thing was grabbed. This impulse here says the thing was not grabbed in time. Okay, well, let's uh, send those as a message. Okay, so let us call the message um, weed grabbed, so that we know that it was the weed that was grabbed. Okay, and we want to send it to the main game logics. So that is right here. So I'm going to grab the slot, put it over there. Um, this bottom one is um, exclude disabled. So if I actually uh, went into, say, logics and I change this to inactive, or maybe game and change this to inactive, then the message would not go to that inactive node. But we're not going to be doing that. So, um, so this is weed grabbed, and then we want another one here. Um, so it's the bottom of the if, and we want to call it, say, weed grab timeout. And we want to send it to the same object. Um, I guess that's it. So that is our grab detection. Um, so let me go ahead and... Uh, set the packing root node, set the packing root to detect grabbed. So there it is, detect grabbed. And now I'm going to pack it. And there we go. So, um, so that's weed. And then of course we need to do the same thing for seeds. So for that, uh, I'm going to go into the logics and I'm going to duplicate detect grabbed and then I'm going to grab it and drag it into the second logics. So for this, now I'm going to set the packing root there and unpack it. So here, uh, we're only going to need, well, actually, it's for the seeds, right? How many grabbables are we going to need? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight of them. But right now, I've only got one seed. Uh, obviously, I need to fix that. So this, whoops. So this grabbable right now, right here, is for a weed. So I'm going to delete that, and then I'm going to go to the seed. Okay, we need to attach a grabbable to this. Transform interaction grabbable. Okay, so now the seed is grabbable. I can take the grabbable and direct it to the node. Okay, so now we could send the detect grab message to the seeds, and we need to change the names of these messages. So instead of weed grabbed, it's just going to be seed grabbed. And then instead of weed grab timeout, it's just going to be seed grab timeout. And there we go. Um, I will double check and make sure that I've set the packing route properly to the seeds. And I'm going to pack this, and there we go. Now this seed is uh, grab detect enabled. So um, I just need to do that for all, you know, for for the other seeds. Um, so let's see. Okay. So now what we need to do is talk about the fact that the seed and the weeds are now grabbable. In other words, I can still grab them. Um, which is a problem. 
uh, because I can grab them even when I'm not waiting for them to be grabbed. So, um, under each weed, we can see that here is the grabbable uh, interface. Now, if I disable grabbable on all the weeds, okay, now I cannot grab the weed. And in fact, on grabbable is, uh, on grab is not going to, is not going to do anything. And I can show you that by opening up detect grabbed, starting it up. Um, let's see. Yeah. Okay, so let me output a display here and a display here. Okay, so the top one is weed grabbed message was sent and the this one is weed grab timeout message was sent. Okay, so when I start it off, now when I try to grab it, you can see that nothing happens and in fact it times out. So that is the correct behavior. But the problem is that I had to manually disable the grabbable. How do I do that programmatically? Well, Right now, there's no way to access um, individual components in slots because we don't have collections, and collections would be things like lists and sets and things. So, you know, you could theoretically get the list of components for a slot and then look for the grabbable in it. We don't have components yet, so that's not going to happen. But what you can do is use a dynamic variable. So let me show you what I mean. Let me go into weeds, attach a component, data, dynamic, and add a dynamic variable space. Now, I don't want to go into all the nuances of what dynamic variables are and what spaces are. You can look at Probable Prime's YouTube tutorial videos for that. I'm going to call the space name um, Flax. Now I'm going to attach another component, dynamic variable. And you're going to see a little hitch because it has to load all of these things in. And it's going to be a Boolean. And we're going to call it grabbable. Finally, we are going to add a dynamic value variable driver that is Boolean. And what this means is it's going to take a variable and it's going to drive a target. What target do we want to drive? Clearly the enable of the grabbable. So I need to open up a second inspector. So let me dequip this. Equip this. Uh, let's just go ahead and open up another inspector and go up a few. Okay, uh, we're on weeds. And we want to go to uh, this weed here. So here's grabbable. Let me now de-equip this and re-equip my logics tool. So now I'm going to take the enabled field and I'm going to put it in the target. So you can see that the enable field turned pink. That means that it is driven by something. Unfortunately, right now you can't find out what it is driven by. Uh, that's an enhancement request. Um, so if I now change the value, see, you can see that changing the value of this dynamic val uh, variable changes the value of that grabbable. Well, now all we have to do is add more drivers on the same variable for all of the weed things. So there's that one, and there is that one. So now, when I uh, change the value of grabbable, all of the weeds either be become grabbable or stop becoming grabbable. Right? Right. So that's nice. Um, how, do we, how do we put that 
into practice. I mean, what, what are we going to use this for? Well, we'll start off with it not grabbable. So I can't grab these weeds. This is a good thing. I don't want to be able to grab these weeds. So what I can do is I can go now back into detect grabbed, set the packing route. Now what I want to do is obviously when I want to detect grab, the first thing I want to do is enable grabbed. So what I'm going to do is insert into here, um, where is it, variables, write dynamic variable, and I'm going to write a Boolean. So I'm going to insert that into the initialization flow. Um, the name is going to be flax slash grabbable. And I did make a mistake. Um, under weeds, this isn't supposed to be grabbable. This is supposed to be flax slash grabbable so that it specifies that it is in the flax space. Because uh, otherwise, what um, if you're sort of searching through the world um, for, well, maybe not searching through the world, but um, um, you are, let me see, how does this work? Um, I, think, I think what happens if you try to set a variable at a, um, basically at the bottom level, it will start going up in uh, uh, in the parent chain, in the parent hierarchy, looking for a variable that is stored in that space. So here we have a space called flax that's stored in weeds. Um, so if we're anywhere in, uh, below that hierarchy and we look for or read or write um, grabbable in the flax space, then we will just end up in uh, the flax space here, and we will not go any higher. Um, I'm probably not explaining that very well. Again, look at Probable Prime's um, tutorials for that. So there we go. Okay, so um, now we have a slot. So if you leave it alone, uh, then by default it is... Uh, the slot is wherever it is. So in this particular case, it would be, because this is logics, it would be you know somewhere under the logics node, probably in the detect grab node. So again, it will start searching up through the parent hierarchy for uh, the flax space, and then it will look for the grabbable variable in the flax space. I don't have to do that because I know that it's in weeds, right? So I can just say weeds, put that in there then it doesn't have to do any search. So, you know, it's a kind of a tiny optimization. Um, and what we want to do is we want to write true. So basically, um, when we send the detect grabbed message, the first thing that we're going to do is make it grabbable. And so uh, that sort of implies that when we grab the weed, or when we time out grabbing the weed, we want to make it ungrabbable because we're done with the grabber. So in order to do that, you can't, you can't do that off of this dy dynamic impulse. Um, you can't do it off of, off of this output because what will happen is the weed grabbed message will be sent it will be processed wherever it is, and then when it's done being processed, then this impulse will go off. So what we really want to do is um, the moment it's grabbed, we want to make it ungrabbable. So why don't we just do that? Um, also, uh, okay, so that's, that's not true. Um, if it's grabbed and we're about to send the message, then we want to make it ungrabbable. If it times out, we're still grabbable, we want to make it ungrabbable. So let's just do that. Okay, so here I'm going to insert set flax grabbable to false. 
in weeds. Okay, and we want to do the same thing for here. So I'm going to insert this. Why did that happen? Okay. Flax grabbable. Stick it back here. And weeds slot. Okay, now to save myself having all these arrows, I could hook this up to there, this up to there, I could hook this up to there. Um, I could do the same thing with these strings because they're the same string. Um, the reality is it doesn't really matter, and um, you know, you would have ribbons that sort of go, actually, maybe for the, maybe for the strings that would make sense. So I can just sort of stick the strings in the back. Something like that, maybe. So. Okay, so uh, what we've done is we have now made it so that when you detect grab, it turns on the grabbable, and then when we're done with that, we turn off the grabbable. Okay, let me pack this and save the session. Okay, so we can save our progress. Okay, and we would do the same thing with the weeds. Um, so I guess what I would do is I would just delete this detect grabbed and then replace it again um, or copy it over again because I've, I've added some, some useful logic. Um, the other thing is that when we start the game, we want to initialize that grabbable to not grabbable. So let me go into the game, set the packing route, and look at it. And you can see that as part of, um, so on duplicate is when the game starts. So you can see that what I've done is I've set the alphas immediately to zero for the flax, the weeds, and the seeds. And what I also want to do is make them ungrabbable. So I'm going to write a dynamic variable, bool. So after this is done, I want to write flax grabbable false in weeds. Okay. And yes, again, I can take it from this slot. Um, well, actually, no, I can't because this slot is logics. This slot is weeds itself. So that goes there. And just to just for like maybe documentation purposes, oops, I can do this. So that I know what I'm pointing to. I'm pointing to the slot weeds. And I would do the same thing for the seeds. So let me do this. Okay, and now this time, it's also going to be flax grabbable. Now, you may ask yourself, um, well, the, these are the same variable names, but the thing is that they are on different objects that have a space on them. So here is the space for weeds. So... If I'm looking for a variable in the flax space, I never go any higher than the declaration of the space. So that means that if I write to flax grabbable in weeds, it will go to it will it will stop its search at uh, this space, which is on weeds. If I do the same thing for seeds. So attach data dynamic space flax. And I search for the grabbable uh, variable name in seeds. Again, it's going to stop at this space. It's not going to go any higher. 
So uh, that is uh, that is a good thing. So let me go to seeds, grab its slot, and put it in there. And again, so now the seeds are not grabbable, and the weeds are not grabbable. Of course, again, I have to put a seed on every flower. Um, I have to go into detect. Uh, I have to go into detect grabbed. I have to, you know, do the on grabbed uh, for all the seeds, which I can do offline. Um, okay, so that is uh, that is the grabbable. So let me do that, and we'll take a little break now. Okay, so the next thing, uh, the next utility that I want to write is the thing that makes uh, some announcement appear. Uh, and float up into the air and disappear. So what we're going to need to do is create an object to hold that text. So let's just make this the uh, announce. And underneath it, we're going to put some text. So let me create new text, and this is outline text. Um, let me go ahead and open an inspector so that I can look at it and drop it into announce. Okay, so this is the outline. Uh, this is the text right over here. So, you know, you can imagine that it would be something like, you know, plus one uh, flax seed, right? Something like this. And then the idea is that it would appear and then it would float up into the air and then disappear. So I guess we sort of want to start it um, from here. And it's going to be positioned roughly here in the middle. Um, we're going to change this to minus 180. Uh, so the unfortunate thing is that it's only really um, um, legible if you're standing right over here, because if you're standing on the other side, it's going to be reversed. You can maybe fix that by um, either making another text that uh, floats up along with this one, or, you know, making it... Uh, uh, around a box so that there are four pieces of text. Um, you could maybe make it so that you can detect the person who did the grabbing and then make this face that person. Um, but, you know, right now I'm just going to make the, uh, make the announcement. Okay, so here is this outline, um, and apparently it's going to start at y equals 1. I guess that's good. Um, and then we're going to make it float upwards. Um, in addition, we're going to need to change its alpha. Now, if we look at, uh, where is the color? Right over here. Here's the color. So if I reduce its alpha, it disappears. Okay. So that's how we're going to change it. So obviously, again, we're going to have to um, drive it. Should I make this bigger? Yeah, that's nice. OK. Um, so let's go ahead and create some logics for this. We'll just call this logics. All right, and we will create a child, and we'll call it announce. Oops. Announce. Okay. So we can start by doing what? Um, well, we can certainly start by copying, actually, uh, 
the alpha for the logics. So let me just make a copy of that. Um, so instead of this object, we'll start with this object. Announce. Okay, so now we have something that can change the alpha of an object. Um, and of course, we now want to point to the color of this uh, text. So we simply go here. We grab the interface card for it. We look for the color item and we point to color. And there we go. So um, what's in here? One, okay. Okay, so that's the current speed. That's the current alpha. So, uh, so that's going to be able to modify the alpha of um, the text. We also want to modify the Y location uh, of the text at the same time. So what we are going to do is use another constant lerp. Um, and we can decide what to do with the speed. Um, let's just uh, let's just use the same speed for now. And what we're going to do is we want it to go from, okay, so we want a few things out of this actually. So um, yeah, we're going to want a few things. So instead of a dynamic impulse receiver that receives a float two, which would be the um, uh, alpha and the speed, we kind of know what that's going to be. So instead of that, we're going to use dynamic impulse receiver, a string. And the string is going to be the thing that we put in the announcement. So let's remove this. Uh, let's remove the float. Remove. Let me just make a copy of the right. And go into variables, storage, and grab a string register. And instead of alpha, it's going to be announce. Okay, so the idea here is that the first thing we're going to want to do is um, the first thing we're going to want to do is, I think, reset. Yeah, we're going to want to reset the Y to zero, uh, to one, which is right over here. Um, so when we, when we send a message saying announce, we send it with the uh, announcement that we want to put in. Um, and we also want to write to a float zero, uh, one, actually. Um, you know what, actually? Um, because this is going to be lerped, lerped, that is now a verb, um, we'll use a float two. Uh, let's get rid of this, repoint it to this. Okay, so we want it to go to one immediately. There. Okay, so um, what we can do with that is um, let me copy the XY, unpack, put it here. Uh, let's, um, let's, let's delete that. I'll deal with the color later. Right now we're dealing with the Y. So this is now going to be a constant lerp. Um, we're going to want to put another right here. 
And this is going to be how to, uh, how to make this float up. So we're going to want to, it to float up to, let's see where, four, that's a little too high, two, that's kind of nice, sure, to two. Okay, so we want this to float up to two and we want it to take, say, one second. Okay, so now when we pulse this here, uh, that will reset the position to one. And then when we pulse here, uh, ah, we need to drive, we need to drive the position. So let me pull out an interface card. There's the position right there. Uh, we need to drive it with XYZ. So we'll go to operators, pack XYZ, like this. We know that the Y is going to be the thing we want to drive, and the other values are zero, so I can just leave those alone, because they're zero by default, and then drive the position. Okay, so now when we pulse this, we reset this to one, and when we pulse this, it floats up. Um, was that too fast? Reset, pulse. Reset. Oh yeah, we wanna go a little slower, maybe like this. Okay, that's maybe too slow. Sure, I like that. Now, while we're doing that, we also want to change the alpha. Um, so at first, so let me put in another right here. Uh, let's put it up here. Uh, let me move these over. And this is where a red print would actually be useful because it has a tool where you can uh, drag, where you can sort of uh, uh, box select a whole bunch of nodes and then move them all at once, which is kind of nice. So I'm going to take another float to register here. And um, we are going to initialize it to... Well, first of all, the speed has to be 1e10 because we want it to be pretty much immediate. And the alpha value we want to be 1. Okay. Uh, and then we want to unpack it, do a constant lerp, and, you know, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, and that's our color. And when we're actually when we're actually going, we want it to fade out to zero also in with 0.7, I think. All right, let's see how that works. So we're gonna reset and now we're gonna pulse. Reset and pulse, good enough. Uh, now we just have to modify the uh, message itself. So we can, again, do that with driving the text. So easily done. String to text. Okay, so there's nothing here because, of course, we don't have anything in the register. So what I could do is I could just temporarily put a right over here that's manual, and I can say, you know, something like, I don't know, hello, world. So then if I pulse this, that's going to appear. That would be as if we wrote the message that way. Um, oh, and then, of course, if I pulse it, uh, we, we get nothing here. So um, the way I can fix that is to do that. Oops. Um, do that. 
Okay. Why isn't it going? Oh, right, because, um, ah, yes, right. Okay. So the thing is that once we do this uh, immediate set, we need to then proceed to make it float upwards. So that would look like this. See? Okay, so um, why doesn't it set properly now? Um, when I pulse this, that sends an impulse to this right, which should immediately set the Y to 1 and the alpha to 1. So why is it not doing that? Let me pulse this here. Okay, so all that did was null out the the text. So I'm not really sure now why it's not working. Um, hmm. Why isn't it working? Well, let's see. If I send an impulse here, it goes into here, and we should at least see the Y value go down to here. Oh, I know why. Okay, so this is a consequence of uh, the constant lerps containing a value. So remember that it contains a current value and a target. So the problem is that the current value is right up there. So if I tell it to go to one immediately, yeah, if I tell it to go to one immediately, these impulses continue and then all of a sudden I'm going to tell it to go to 2 at speed 0.7. So the, um, so on the next sort of tick of the clock, the constant lerp looks at its inputs and it sees 2. And then it realizes it's already at 2, so it doesn't do anything. So what I need to do is I need to put in a one update delay in here. That one update delay will allow the constant lerps to read its, their inputs um, because they read their inputs on every update. So that will cause the constant lerp to accept these values. So I hope that made sense. So let's go to flow updates delay. And what we want to do is we want to put the delay right, say, here. Uh, let me move that ribbon. So it's in here, and then we go to here, and the number of updates that we delay is just one. That will give the constant lerps the opportunity to read their inputs and then do this thing. So let's see that happen now. There we go. Okay. So it was important to understand exactly how constant lerp works. Again, it's got an output, which is kind of like a register, and it reads its inputs. But it only reads its inputs on, on uh, the update clock. So in other words, the tick of, of, I guess, the graphics frames or something like that. If, because we didn't give it an opportunity to tick, constant lerp didn't read any of these inputs and instead read these inputs. So it appeared as though it didn't do anything. Okay. Um, so now what I can do is I can get rid of this temporary write. I can get rid of this pulse. And now I can set the packing route and update uh, and pack. Now there's one thing that I just want to uh, point out. There's one thing that I want to point out is that um, is that the end the end of th is that when you send this message, what happens is the the flow of execution goes through here, goes through here, up here, up here, and then it basically um, it would continue down here, but there's nothing here. <clears throat> so what happens is 
the message is done and it returns to where you sent it. One update later, this impulse goes off and it goes through here and then it would continue over here except we've got nothing else to do. So um, it's important to realize that when you send this message, it returns pretty much immediately. In other words, it returns when this thing starts to move. So if you're expecting to do more stuff after you send this message, well, you're going to have to wait some amount of time before all of these lerps are done. And because we're not sending a message when those lerps are done, there really isn't any way of telling when those lerps are done. So you would have to monitor the lerp for the out for you know for their final positions. Um, but again, we're just doing this quick and dirty. So let's just pack this, pack this, pack this, and pack this. And again, we had to pack all of those because there were all those reference pointers. Okay, so we now have um, we now have a utility to announce something apparently hello world uh, by default that's okay um, all right next thing I think we're going to do is actually tackle the game logic okay so let's go ahead and start implementing the game logic uh, so um, what I can do is Go ahead and unpack the game logic that we have right now. And we can see that uh, what we've done is we've basically reset things. Um, the only thing we haven't reset is the outline. Um, and I don't actually have a reset for that, and I may want to do that. But for now, the outline is invisible. So, so far, it'll, it'll be fine. <laughs> Um, okay, so we've done our reset. So here, what we want to do in the initial state is we just want to wait for a certain period of time. I'm going to set it to five seconds just to speed things up, but in the real game, it, it I think is like 30 seconds or something. Um, and then we want the flax plants to slowly appear and then we want to wait a certain amount of time again, and then we want the weeds to appear. Um, so we could do that um, simply by, we could do that simply by uh, chaining all of those things using this impulse. But I don't want to do that. Now you can see that I've numbered all of these states from 0 all the way down to 15. Uh, there is actually supposed to be a 16th state over here, which is kind of the end state. Um, and we're going to make a little state machine. So the idea is that when we're in a state, well, here, let me show you. Let's just uh, start off by giving a, let's see, it's under flow. I think it's, it's an impulse demultiplexer? Nope, multiplexer. Okay, so what the impulse multiplexer does is it takes an impulse in and based on this input over here, outputs the impulse on that output. So you can have a whole lot of outputs. This one tells you how many outputs there are. So this would be, so this one would be 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. So if you put in 0, 1, 2, 3, or 4 in here, you'd get that impulse out over here. So the idea is that we can simply hook this into here. We can get a, uh, a variable, an integer register, and put that 
say here, say here, and that input and that integer will tell us where we are in the state diagram. So initially we should be at zero. So what I'm going to do is, whoops, whoa. <laughs> what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to actions, go to write, and I'm going to set this up to write a zero into the integer. Okay, because the default of the input is zero. So we've done all this initialization, we've set up the state to zero, and now we are here in the impulse multiplexer. Now, of course, we're going to need from zero to 16. So, I mean, there's going to be a lot of these. How many is that? Well, let's find out. 19, that's uh, a bit too many. 17, yeah, that would be zero through 16. 17, right? Yes. Okay, great. Now, unfortunately, there is a bug uh, that when you, uh, when you expand these nodes, um, it looks like the ribbon breaks. And of course, you can't like rewrite it because it's already there. So what I typically do is I just delete the ribbon and add the ribbon again. The ribbon is actually there. It's just that graphically it appears it appears in its original location. So, okay. So, um, during state zero, we want to uh, do something. In this case, we don't do anything. And then we want to wait on some condition. Now, the some condition uh, for state zero here is a period of time has elapsed. So that's easy enough to do. What we're gonna do is we're gonna grab a delay node uh, it's under flow delay. And we're going to make it five seconds. And when we're done with that delay, we have to decide where to go next, what state to go to next. And of course, we're going to go to state one next. So rather than write a one into the state integer, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to actions and use the plus plus node, right? Because we're on zero and, whoops, and all we want to do is increment the state. So I need to put this over here and now to make things neat, I'm just going to apply some of these, um, you can call them staples. Technically, they're relays, um, so they just relay their input to their output. Um, but I kind of like calling them staples because it's like you've got this wire here and you're stapling it, you know, along the wall almost. Um, so here's another staple, for example. Okay. So what this will do is it will increment the state and then whatever this does. Well, whatever this does is we need to go back to the beginning, right? So I'm going to do that, and I'm going to put some more staples in here. Uh, maybe I'll put a staple up here and another one, say, here. Does that look okay? Sure. So the effect here is that when we're in state zero, we delay five seconds, increment, and then go back into the impulse multiplexer which now goes into here, which is number one. So what do we do in number one? What is the action that we take? Well, the action that we take is to fade in the, uh, fade in the flax. So let's do that. And we know we can do that with the alpha message. So I'm gonna need a dynamic impulse trigger. Let me put it over here because I know that strings are big. And rather than run alpha all the way out from there, I'm just going to stick it in over here. See how big these end up being? Okay. So um, the slot that we're going to uh, apply, the slot that we're going to do for alpha is the, uh, the flax slot. Um, and in fact, we want to go to logics, 
We could go to Flax, but then it would have to search through all of its children in order to find the thing that accepts the message. So we're just going to go straight to the logics node. Okay, and again, what I could do is, you know, just sort of put this here somewhere. Problem is that it's not really out of the way. I guess that's okay. All right, and what do we want? Well, we want alpha to go from zero to one in a period of, say, um, two seconds, sure. Okay, and so that's the action that we took, and now we need to wait for some event to happen. Now, in this case, we're going to wait for a timeout to happen. So in other words, it's the same thing as the delay, and then, of course, we can see that after the delay, we increment, uh, we increment the state again. So, um, interestingly, that's uh, the same as this. So I could just take this uh, impulse and plug it directly into the delay over here. Um, should I do that? No, let's not do that. Just for the sake of um, not having so many uh, ribbons going to the same place, let's just do this. And then, of course, we're going to need a plus plus over here. So after the delay, we're going to want to plus plus the state, and then we're going to want to go back to our multiplexer. Okay, so that's state number one. State number two, we do the same thing with the weeds. So the action that we take is to, uh, let's just say, alpha up the weeds. So we're going to take one of these things, uh, it's going to be alpha, <clears throat> so I can do that. Um, it's weeds, so I'll go to the weeds logic and grab the slot. So now we're sending the alpha message to the weeds. And uh, we want it to go to alpha 1, sure, with the same speed, 2. Okay? Now, after that, we are waiting for some conditions to happen. Okay. One of the conditions is for a timeout to happen. Another condition is for us to grab the weed. So what we want to do here is also, after we, send, after we get the alpha going, um, we also want to um, dynamic impulse trigger. I need to leave space for the string. And what was it called? It was called like um, detect grab. So then we want to set up the grab detection on the weeds, right? So it's in here. Uh, I did call the object detect grabbed, but I think that I called the message detect grab. So we're going to do that. So that starts off the detect grab. Okay. Now we're going to receive a message back from here. So we're either going to get a weed grabbed message, which means that we're going to go along this path to state three, or we're going to get a weed grab timed out. I'm going to double check these messages. Uh, we grab timed out. And if we get that message, we should go to state seven. Okay, so in order to do that, we're going to have a dynamic impulse receiver. Um, I'm going to put it right over here. So the first one could be weed grabbed, and I'm, and I'm certain about that message. 
or we could receive a message that is um, weed, I think it's weed grab timed out, something like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pack all this. Lots of fragments. Any other fragments? No. Um, and then I'm going to go to uh, the weeds, detect grabbed. Detect grabbed. Uh, what's going on? Set packing root. Okay. Ah, weed grabbed and weed grab timeout. And the message was detect grab. Okay, so I will pack that. Any more fragments? No. Let's unpack the game. Weed grabbed, weed grabbed, timeout. Okay. So, um, so we send a message, detect, so we send the detect grab message. And then we don't do anything after that. We're just sitting there doing nothing. We're going to get one of these two messages, weed grabbed or weed grabbed timeout. If we get weed grabbed, what we want to do is set the alpha to zero immediately. So we're going to want to set the alpha to zero immediately. Uh, sure, let's just go ahead and grab the alpha string from here. Um, and it's going to be the same as this, which is the weed, right? Because this is weeds. Let me just stick that here. Okay, so that's weeds. So I'm going to simply grab this and stick it over here and sort of put the staple in the back. Okay, and we are going to want to set the alpha to zero immediately. So in other words, make it disappear. Okay, so there's that. And maybe we even want to send an announcement. So maybe we want to send an announcement, uh, which is a trigger with value string. Bring it out here. And we want to announce. And Um, there's the logics that handles announce. So we'll just send the message to that slot. And we're just going to say, we did. Just to sort of acknowledge that you did something. Okay, and after we set that up, we want to go to uh, so we're on weeded, so we want to go to the next state, which is three. So because we're already on state two, we can just use plus plus to go right to state three. Um, let me put another staple up here and then drag that up here. I can probably just put another staple up here and then uh, yeah, let's go here and put that staple up there. Okay, so that's what happens when we weed. When we don't weed, what happens is the weeds are going to stay there, so we don't have to change the alpha, but we do need to go to state 7. So in this case, we are going to need a write node. And we're going to write a 7 um, to here. Um, 
Let me grab another staple. Let's bring this all the way out to here. Staple this down. Bring this out to here and run run this ribbon up to there. Okay? And go back. Okay? Let me go ahead and pack all of this. Um, it's interesting that, that this uh, ribbon is broken. I wonder why. Um, yeah, that's the one that went into the multiplexer. Okay, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to save the session. And now I'm going to unpack again. Okay. All right. Um, you can sort of see that uh, this thing is quite large, um, and I'm kind of running out of space uh, almost. Um, so I may, you know, extend it a little bit downwards, or I may just extend it. Um, I'll probably just extend it even further out here in this space. Um, okay. So what have we done? We've gone through and. We've now handled the case where we weed, and we've handled the case where we time out. So let's go to state three. In state three, all we're doing is we are doing pretty much exactly the same thing as state one, almost. Um, in state one, we set the alpha to one. Of course, if we do that again, it doesn't matter because we're already at one. Um, and then we delayed five seconds, and then we... Um, incremented the state, which is exactly what we want to do in state three. So, um, where is state two? State two broke for some reason. This is state two. Or maybe I never put that ribbon in in the first place. Okay, so that's state two. Uh, so state three does pretty much exactly the same as state one, which means that I'm just going to put a staple here and pipe it directly into there. That is state three, which then goes into state four. State four does exactly the same thing as state two. If you weed, increment the state. If you don't weed, go to state seven. So that's easy enough to take care of. I'll add another staple, and there we go. Okay, so now, if we're in state five, we basically wait for a period of time, and then this says ready to harvest, and that, um, what that actually does is it is it's supposed to make uh, the the planter disappear and this flax appear. Um, so, so for state five. For state five, we are basically doing nothing except delaying. Um, so I can actually go from zero, one, two, three, four, five, and just go straight into the delay. Because all we're doing is we're waiting for five seconds. Okay, and then during state six, what we need to do is we need to make the flax planter disappear and the flax appear. So we didn't add the flax to our surround uh, to our mini game yet. So we need to do that. Um, and I will take a break and do that myself. Um, add the alpha logics to it because obviously we want it to be initially invisible and then just to become visible. Um, so I'll do that offline. Okay, so um, what I've done is I've taken the flax bundle, I've extracted the materials. Of course, there were two, one for the rope and one for the, you know, watermelon thing. 
Um, I hooked up the alpha logics to it. I hooked up the tech grabbed to it. Uh, so we should be good to go. Um, I've opened up the game logic, but now the big flax bundle is kind of in the way. Um, so I can fix that easily by just uh, setting the dynamic variable to, oops, to um, actually no, I can't, can I? Um, I have to set its uh, transparency, right? So, okay, so what I'm going to do is I am going to break this line right here. And you can see that in the initialization, I've also set the uh, alpha of the flax bundle to zero. And I've also set its uh, grabability to false. Uh, and then I'm just going to pulse here, and that basically makes everything disappear. Okay, so now I can put that back, and now I can see uh, pretty much everything. So, um, let me put this away, grab this, deselect all so that I don't get those outlines. Put this back on my shelf. Okay, here we go. Um, so where we where we left off is uh, I was going to put the the flax bundle in here, uh, and then now we can go ahead and figure out what should happen um, in let's see phase five. Let's see. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So in phase 5, all we did was delay. That goes to phase 6, which is uh, ready to harvest. Um, so in the actual game, what happens is that the planter just sits there, and then you get an option that says harvest. So instead, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make the planter, the, the flax bed disappear, and the flax bundle appear. So that is going to happen right here here. So in order to do that, um, let's see, what do I need to do? So we have this uh, surround here. We also have the ground, we have the stake rows, and we have um, well I guess the flax and the weeds and the seeds and everything. What I'm going to do is I'm going to create an object that is just bed. And then I'm going to put all these items in the bed, even the flax and the weeds and the seeds. So that all I have left is basically the logics uh, the announce object, the flax bundle, and the bed. Now what I can do is I can activate or deactivate the bed, and you can see that it basically disappears. So the first thing that I want to do here is deactivate the bed. So we can do that. So unlike grabbable, um, active does have a logics node associated with it. So it's under slots and it's just set slot active self. So right here, I can grab the bed slot, and I can set it to false. Okay, so that will deactivate the bed slot. Um, and now for the flax bundle, I want to alpha it up. So. Uh, let's see. So again, this is alpha. I'm going to put alpha like right over here, sort of centrally located. Okay. Um, there's the logics for the flax bundle. So that goes there. And I'm going to use the same alpha and timing. Okay. So. Um, and once I do that, 
I want to detect grab on the flax bundle. So I guess I'm just going to use reuse that string. Um, detect grab on the flax bundle. So again, um, actually I can just use this logics here because this should be the same thing. So I set the alpha, I set the uh, grab, and then, um, so, okay, so the other thing that I did um, for the flax bundle is I copied the grab detector, but I disconnected the timeout because we're just going to sit here and wait for the flax to be grabbed. So, um, it's flax grabbed. Flax grabbed. And when the flax is grabbed, uh, we want to set its alpha. Let's push that back a little bit. We want to set its alpha. Um, and it's pretty much going to be this again to invisible. And we want to, let's go all the way, say, here, announce. And we, of course, need to use the same slot. That's the announce object. And we will just say plus one flax. And that's it. Um, probably what we would do for the actual game, um, you know, if this were part of a larger game, is we would wait a little while and then we would actually delete the entire mini game because you've collected the flax, that's it, the mini game is over. Um, you would have to plant a new flax seed. Um, but right now we're just going to leave it. Um, doing nothing after this, um, and that's it. Uh, let's see. Okay. I think it's time for a test. Let's do a test run. So all we've done is we've implemented uh, the top of this flowchart. So basically what we have to do is pick the weeds. Uh, if we don't pick the weeds, then we'll end up in state seven. And what I'm going to do also, ah, um, well, this is interesting. Uh, the reason that this is happening, I think, is that the flax bundle is still here, except it's, uh, yeah, see, that's where the flax bundle is. Um, let me make it inactive for now so that I can actually see what I'm doing here. Um, let me add um, a display for this state so that we know what state we ended up in. Okay. Let me reactivate the flax. And, and let's see what happens. So again, when I uh, pulse this in order to start the game, we should see the flax grow up and then the weeds grow up. I'm going to pull the weeds. Uh, there should be some time and then the weed will appear. I'll pull the weeds and then there will be some time. And then the, the bed should disappear and the flax should appear. So let's see what happens pulse. And we can look at the state. So after five seconds, it should go to one. And there we go. We've got our flax. Then we should go to two and we should see some weeds. I'm going to pull the weeds. It says weeded. That's great. After a little bit of time, the weeds are going to reappear. Again, we see weeded. That's great. And then that's it. The flax is here. When I 
pick up the flax, it should just say plus one flax. And it doesn't, and I'm not sure why. Okay, so grabbing the flax didn't actually work. Let's see if we can figure out why. Um, so first of all, um, let me deactivate the flax for now. We're on state six, so we know that this impulse happened. Um, we know, of course, that we set the bed to false. We know that we set the alpha to one. However, uh, the the uh, grabbing doesn't seem to work. So um, why is that? Let's find out. There's the logics and there is detect grabbed. So um, let me just make sure that it is actually going to the right place. Yeah, I think it is. Okay, I just want to make sure that this slot is correct. It's uh, logics on the flax bundle, so that definitely is correct. So apparently we sent the um, we sent the detect grab message to the flax bundle, but we never got the flax grabbed message. So let's see why. Um, I'm going to pack all of this logics, and then I'm going to unpack the detect grabbed logics and see what happened. Okay, so we should have gotten the detect grab and we should have set the grabbable to true. Let's see if it did actually get set to true in the flax bundle. It did not. Okay, so this is a problem that we need to fix. Um, let's just see if uh, there's a problem with the grabbable uh, dynamic variables. No, it looks okay. Um, I did on purpose uh, leave the slot empty so that it would just go up to whatever parent it could find um, and set the flax grabbable to true. So either, uh, either we did not detect the grab or um, we, well, we certainly, yeah, either we did not send detect grab or we did, but we were not able to set the grabable to true. Okay. So what I want to do is, let's see, what should I do? Okay, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm going to connect this to a display. And unfortunately you can't like, you know, insert uh, a display here. Um, the display is the end of the impulse. So I'm just gonna put that there. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna reset the game. So, the way to reset the game, hmm. yeah, that is a question. How do we reset the game? Well, all that logics is over there. Um, so I should be okay with opening up the game again. Okay, because all the logics is over here. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to also add, uh, let's see. I'm going to add a message receiver. So flow, dynamic impulse receiver. And I'm going to say go. So this way what I can do is I can just put some logics, you know, over there off to the side that sends the message go and that actually triggers everything. Um, I will manually have to go to the bed and activate it. Okay. Um, let me go ahead and pack this into game, right? And now what I can do is, uh, let's see, I can actually go over here, maybe. 
Yeah. Let's go over here and just create a dynamic impulse trigger. Manual. Go. And then send it to the logics of the game. Okay, so now this is sort of like my manual button to start the thing off. So when I pulse this, we should be ready to go. So what we want to do is we want to pick the weed. Where's the weed? There's the weed. Picked. This is another problem that I'll get to in a moment. Okay. Okay. All right. So we see that we did indeed detect the grab. So what must have happened is that this flax grabbable failed. Now there's an extra impulse over here that's for on not found. It seems to me like it should have been found. Let's just see, um, yeah, so the weird thing is, is that it was not found. Why wasn't it, well, was it not found? Let's go ahead and do the game again and see if this failure uh, impulse comes out. So we're going to pulse this. I will have to manually activate the bed. And, okay. There's the weed. And, okay. All right, so presumably it worked. It's just that, oh, well, look at that. It, it's now grabbable. Okay, that's really weird. So what happens if I grab it? Okay, well, it's it's working now. Um, okay, I don't understand that, but let's... No, 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 no. Uh, let's go ahead and pack this into detect grabbed. I don't understand why why that did that. Okay. Now this is another thing that we're going to have to fix. So there's this, this, this flax shaped thing over here. Um, so the real question is, um, and what I can do, and, and I don't know if you can see this, I don't know if this is actually getting rendered, but my, uh, the ray cast that is coming out of here, um, it actually stops on uh, you know, any object that it hits, um, and it's stopping on this flax thing. So I think that what I should probably do is deactivate the flax thing altogether, the flax bundle, and then when the flax is ready to appear, just activate it. I think that'll solve that problem. Because the other problem was that with this active uh, and with this outline over here, I was unable to get to the weeds that were behind it. So, so what I should do, um, so what I should do is um, reactivate the bed, bring out the game logic, okay, um, and we should make a copy of set slot active self and insert that here and make this true and give it to the flax bundle. There. So now, um, okay, so I'm, I'm looking at my raycast and I'm seeing that it's still, the mesh is still there. Um, because the flax bundle is still there. 
If I deactivate it now, that should be the initial state of the game. So I'm looking at my raycast and I'm not seeing it stop at the flax bundle. It's just going straight through. And that's what should happen. Um, and in fact, I can put that into the logic over here as well to sort of initialize the game. Um, let's just put it inside here. Grab the flax bundle. And set it to false. OK, there we go. OK, let me go and pack it. Pack it. OK, let's, uh, let's initialize the game again. Pulse. And see if it works. All right, here are our flax plants. Here is our weed. I pick it and it says weeded. I'm raycasting through the entire thing. So that worked. I can pick the far weed. That worked, weeded. Okay, and now we have this and now I grab it and we get plus one flax, excellent. Um, that was interesting. The, uh, the flax is actually still here. So, um, yeah, so actually we just want to deactivate the flax when you grab it. We don't want to set its transparency. We just want to completely deactivate it. Okay, so that, that's fine. Um, let's go ahead and bring everything back. So the bed should be active. The flax bundle should be inactive. And let's pull the game logic out once more. So when the flax is grabbed, instead of just setting the alpha to zero, we will set its slot. Oops, that's not what I wanted. We will set its slot active self. Um, let me just pull flax bundle to here and set it to, come on, come on. Set it to false, and then we can go ahead and do plus one flax. Okay, this is perfect. Let me pack it, pack it, and save my session. Now everything is saved, and finally go back to the game logics. Okay, we are now going to implement the second part, the seed part. So this is what happens when we go into state seven. So that's right over here, this ribbon right over here. Now, the, the good thing about this is that this is very repetitive. So I probably should only have to write two bits of code here. Um, and I am probably going to end up not putting it down below here, but you know maybe putting it out here. Because um, putting it down below means that I have to crouch. Because um, I, I, well, I could go through the floor. I could set my locomotion to no clip, look down, and then just go down a little more. And now I'm sort of, you know, chest height in the floor. I don't like using no clip that much. It's a little unnatural to me. But if that's all you can do, well, that's all you can do. So let's go ahead and see what happens on state seven. Okay, so state seven, all we're doing is we're keeping the weeds. Uh, remember, they're not grabbable anymore. So we're keeping the weeds and we're just waiting for a period of time. So let's do that. Um, and we're going to state eight. Well, the nice thing is that we already have a delay that goes to the next state. So let's just reuse that. I'll do this. State seven is done. Let's go to state eight. Okay, so what do we need to do? Well, we need to do pretty much the same thing as we did with the weeds, except with the seeds. So the seeds should fade in, and then we should wait for them to be grabbed or wait for them to simply time out. 
So what that means is, and which state did I say it was the same as? Two, zero, one, two. So that's this one right here. So I'm simply going to copy that. Um, yeah, I did, I did say that I was going to go that way, but I think there's... Uh, I think there's enough space down here. There's a little bit of space down here. Okay, so I, so what I want to do is I want to set the alpha, and this time I want to set the alpha on seeds. So uh, here's my inspector. Um, the seeds are in bed. So here is the logics for that. Um, let's see. It's one and two, just like this. Okay. And then there will be a dynamic impulse trigger to see if we detect a grab. Um, and we're doing that on the same logics. Okay. If we do detect a grab, I'll simply put this over here. And instead of weed grabbed, it's going to be seed grabbed. Seed grabbed. Okay. Uh, then what we want to do is make the seeds disappear. I'm going to just put that up here. And it's uh, alpha again. So, sure, let me just use a ribbon down here. Oops. This is alpha. So I can just put that there um, on the logics for it. Um, and it should disappear just like this does. And then we want to announce, announce, here's another announce. Let's move this down to here. Announce. Um, Let's get the scene inspector out of the way. Announce plus one flax seed. Okay, now once we get the seed, we want to increment by one. So in all of these, um, when we have seeds and we pick the seed, we increment the state by one. So that's pretty easy to do. We just uh, um, we can just go up here, right? Because that does exactly the same thing. It just says plus plus, and then it goes back into the state machine. Let me save that. Okay. Now. This is actually going to be true for state um, 8, 10, 12, and 14. They do exactly the same thing. Uh, there may be, let's see, there may be a difference in... No, there is no difference. Okay, so what we can do is we can simply do this. Now, state 16 is going to be something else. State 16 is sort of like the final state where actually the bed disappears and all you're left with is a seed. Okay. So let's deal with um, the other states. So this is what happens when... Um, uh, let's see. This is what happens when you're when you're uh, when you've picked the seed. So the seed has disappeared. We've gotten an announcement saying plus one flax seed, and now we're just sitting waiting around for another seed. Um, 
and that's just a delay with uh, a plus. So that means that here we can simply go one, two, three, and four. Okay, final state. Let's save that. Uh, and let's go to the final state. So the final state is what happens when, ah, oh, wait a minute, no. Ooh, yeah. Um, when we're here and we time out, we don't want to go plus plus because that'll just get us, when we're here and we time out, we don't want to do plus plus because that'll just get us to the next state. Um, oh, yeah, right. No, we, that is correct. Uh, on states 9, 11, 13, and 15, after we time out, we do want to go to the next state. Uh, the thing we haven't taken care of is what happens when, when the seed has appeared, but we time out. So there's this uh, seed grab timeout, which we have to handle. So let's go ahead and handle this. And I made all this noise about how I wasn't going to crouch, but here I am crouching. So here is seed grab timeout. Okay. Now for seed grab, grab timeout, all we have to do is um, all we have to do is go to go to uh, the state plus two. So I'm just going to take this plus plus, and I'm going to put it out here. Um, and I'm going to pipe it in. And then we want a plus plus a second time. That makes two. So I can just pipe it into there. And there we go. Okay, that should do it. Now we can talk about the final state. So again, let me save. Okay, the final state. So this is what happens when we've got seeds, uh, but we time out. Um, or we've got weeds and we just, you know, uh, we go for five seconds and then we stop. On the last phase, what should happen is everything should disappear except we should get a seed. Okay, so everything should disappear. That means that the bed disappears. We know how to do that. So let's just go ahead and do that. Set slot active. Um, is this the right thing? Yep, this is the bed. Um, let me just stick that there. So I can simply do that. And there we go, false. Um, right, and now we need a seed to appear. Yeah, we need a seed to appear. And Unfortunately, it's not going to be the seeds that are on the plants. It's going to be one seed on the ground. So unfortunately, what that means is we need to create another object here that holds only that seed and duplicates... Um, and duplicates uh, the logics. Now in this case, I'm just gonna be lazy and I'm not gonna do the alpha fade in. I'm just gonna have it immediately appear. Um, we are gonna have to detect grabbed because when we grab it, we want it to disappear and display plus one flaxseed. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to create a child and I'm gonna call it final seed. Okay. And here's the interesting thing. If I copy it from the bed, so there are seeds here, I can take one, I can copy it, on, copy it, and put it in final seed. Okay. Now, the interesting thing is that its mesh, its, uh, its material, is seed material, which of course, remember, is um, shared by all the seeds and is currently 
Uh, let's see. And is currently um, invisible. No, actually it will be visible, right? Or will it? No, it may not be visible. But I can make it visible, right? Because it doesn't actually matter if they're visible on the flowers because the entire bed is going to be disabled, which means that I won't see it, which means that I can simply use the same material. Um, and in fact, I can use the alpha logics over here to make it visible. So that's good. Um, I also need to copy the detect grabbed logics. So I'm going to make a copy of, let me make a copy of the, the flax bundle one. The reason that I want to do that is because it has no timeout. It just sits there and waits for it to be grabbed. Okay. Now, um, okay, let me go ahead and pack what we've got and save what we've got and unpack detect grabbed. Um, let me just go to final seed. Um, aha, yes, yeah, so the grabbable also needs to be driven. So I need to get, I need to attach a space to this. And I need to call it flax. I need to attach a Boolean to it. And it's called grabable. No, it's called flax slash grabable. And I need to attach a driver to it. Flax grabable. Okay, and now I need a second window here. Um, go up one. Uh, go to the final seed the seed pod itself and copy um, copy enabled into there. Okay, so now um, now it's grabbable, now it's not. Okay, uh, I also need to position it um, to where it's going to appear. So right now it's invisible, I don't really care, um, but I can use my Dev tool tip to move it around. I hope that moved it around. Yeah. I'm just going to put it like here. Okay. I could even make it bigger because it, it, you know, it doesn't really have to appear uh, as the flower. So I could actually scale it up. Um, so instead of 0 0.009, I can make it like 0 0.002. Okay, so now it's a little bigger. Um, I can't show you it until it actually appears. Um, but I think that should be it. So, um, let's pack this logics away. Now we need to go into detect grabbed for it. And the logics appears all the way over there. Um, flax scrabble, blah, blah, blah. Um, we have disconnected this uh, timeout. So now it's going to be um, seed grabbed. So we're just going to send another seed grabbed. Um, actually, we're going to call it final seed grabbed. Right, because we're already handling a message called seed grabbed. So, you know, we don't want to, uh, to, um, trigger any of the other logic. And we need to set up the grabbable correctly. So let's see, where is it? 
Um, here it is. Here is the grabbable. Okay, now it is pointing to the right grabbable. I can now set that. Okay, let's open up the game logics and do the final thing. Game. Okay, so uh, seed grabbed. Um, okay, where am I? Ah, yes. Okay, so this is the final. Um, this is the the final thing. 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 Thingaling. Oops, I don't need that. What I want to do is we've set the bed to inactive, but now we need to set the final seed to active. So I'm going to deactivate it right here. Um, I'm going to grab final seed. Okay, I don't know why that didn't work. Oh, I need to grab it here. Okay, that's final seed. Set it to true, so now it's active. Um, and then I need to detect grab on it. So let's see. It would basically be like this. Yeah, here I go again, crouching. So um, and this is we want to set this to send it to detect grabbed. That's the logics for it. That should trigger that message. And then when we grab the final seed, so this is now final seed grabbed, we will deactivate the final seed, which is this. Set it to false and announce. Let's get rid of this. Uh, we can announce one flax seed. Um, we could actually we could actually just go to here, right? Because the next thing that's going to happen after this is we're going to increment the state again and go over there. But there is no state after that. So I think, um, you know what? Let's just keep it clean. Um, here we go. Announce. Announce. Plus one flaxseed. And then it doesn't do anything. This is what would happen afterwards, but nothing should happen. Okay. Let's go ahead and pack all that. And now let us see what happens when we go through the seed path. So here we go. All right. So we've got flax flowers. We have weeds. We're going to let it go to weed. OK, so I should no longer be able to pick, right? The seeds appeared. Great, we've got plus one flax seed. I can't pick the weed. This is good. The flax seeds reappeared. I can pick the flax seed. Great. Now when the flax seeds reappear again, I can pick the flax seeds. And I should be able to do this four times. Okay. And then the bed should disappear. And we get a giant flax seed, which didn't appear because I forgot to set the alpha. <laughs> OK, I forgot to set the alpha, which is fine. Um, I can sort of see it. And if I pick it, I get plus one flax seed and it disappears. And that is the end of the game. So let me go ahead and fix that one final issue. Um, so I need to activate the bed. There it is. Um, I need to pull out the game logic. There it is. Um, I need to set the um, 
Where is alpha? Sure. Where should I put that? How about right after true? So I'll stick it in right here. Okay. And unfortunately, this is getting very messy, but if I had this on a red print, I could actually organize this very nicely, very prettily. Um, let's grab alpha. Um, and we are setting it on the weed material, right? So where is the weed material, the seed material? I'm just going to pull out another copy. Uh, so it's going to be under bed, seeds. And I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure this will work even though the seed materials parents, parents, parent is, uh, parents, parent is inactive. I think, I hope. Um, if not, I could just make another copy of the seed material. Um, so, you know what? I'm just gonna do that. Cause I mean, there's, there's complications and then there's, there's really no reason for that. So I'm just gonna make a copy of, of this seed material, put it in final seed. Um, open up the mesh for that seed and go to seed material and uh, change its alpha to one and move it to there. Okay, so it's another copy. Oh, well, um, it's fine. It'll be fine. Okay, let me go ahead and pack this again. Pack this again, I don't know why that's broken, but we should be good to go. So, let me go ahead and deselect everything and press go. All right, let's see what happens. Okay, we've got flowers. We've got weeds and I'm not gonna touch them. We've got seeds, so I'm going to pull the seeds. Um, for the next go round, I'm not gonna pull the seeds. So, zero, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, now we should be at the next stage where we can still pull the seeds. This time I'm not gonna be able to get four seeds, I can only get three. Oh, or two. <laughs> okay, and there is that big seed, and when I pick it, I get one flax seed, and that is the end of the game. So, um, that is it. I can now save this in my inventory, and I can put it in my public folder for you to take a look at and pull apart and modify if you want. So I will do that right now. I will call this surround. I will now call this instead of surround v3. I will call this the flax. Minigame V1. And I will go into my uh, inventory. Go to, well, first of all, planter. So that I have my own copy of it. And then I will go into my public folder under gadgets. Okay, um, yeah, so the only problem is that when you spawn this, uh, you won't actually be able to start the game. Um, so this is, a, I will leave that as an exercise to the reader. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, um, it may not be as friendly though, because uh, if somebody just goes into my public folder and sees the Flax mini game and opens it up, apparently nothing will happen. So I guess I should fix that and I, I will fix that after this video. Um, but for now, I think that's good enough. So 
Uh, yeah. Yeah, I think that's fine. Um, so, thank you for watching. Um, I hope that uh, all of this um, video has been useful to you to um, think about creating your own things out of primitives and pre-made assets in Neos um, and basically, you know, make your own little games. Um, make a tale in the desert in Neos. Maybe it'll work. So until then, bye-bye.